All right, everybody, I want to uh, take the time a little bit to uh, maybe answer some questions and give a better explanation as to how RFID technology works as well as how these RFID tables function in a, a poker setting. So first and foremost, what I want to demonstrate to you guys is the actual motherboard that we're working with here. Um, it's a fairly simple setup. Uh, these USB ports on the side are where we're gonna hook our camera setups if we want to have automatic cameras switch according to action, which is, I believe, how Stones has theirs set up. Um, this is a power source uh, where a, a simple, um, I believe, 16 volt uh, plug is connected. This has actually been done away with in the newer model. They just use USB technology. What's missing here, uh, because this is actually a broken one, is a USB port here. This is where um, the signal is transmitted out of the motherboard to the actual server. So there are many ways that you can send this signal, each one being more secure and providing more distance than the last. Uh, you can use a basic USB cord, which is what we use here at the Academy because security isn't really an issue in a teaching environment. Um, the more secure versions would be fiber optics or uh, ethernet cables, which I know most of the secure streams, uh, they, they vie for those options. Uh, there's a fourth option, which is wirelessly. These motherboards do have the capacity to connect via Wi-Fi. That's obviously the least secure as packets will be being sent uh, through the air and able to be intercepted by somebody who's tech savvy. I don't know, uh, certainly, or to any certainty what Stones uses. My best guess would be if it's hardwired, they're using USB um, because the proximity isn't all that far so they could get a cable that far. But I have a fear that they're actually just using wireless technology, which would be the least secure of all the measures. Uh, the second thing I wanna talk about is how the readers work whenever interpreting the RFID cards. So in each one of these cards, there is a uh, unique RFID number, effectively, Consider it like a QVC scanner. I, I believe that's the right terminology for it, or uh, a barcode scanner of sorts, right? Every, every one of these cards has a unique number attached to it. The reader itself is just meant to interpret that number and send that data then to the server. So one of the big questions with the misread hand was, couldn't, uh, the, couldn't a card that was meant for his neighbor have passed over his reader and then been read as such? So I'm gonna demonstrate to you what would happen whenever that's the case. So let's say for instance, you know, Mike has dealt the first card off the deck here and he's meant to get uh, the next card through the orbit, but his neighbor card actually hits his reader first and then it's pitched to his neighbor. Now we come back through, he gets his second card and so does uh, his neighbor. What you're gonna find whenever we go to the server side of things is these, these uh, hands are going to be obviously incorrect. Mike is now gonna have three cards on his reader, which should cause an error, but if it doesn't, it'll just read the first two. This hand actually won't be read at all because whatever the card was that was supposed to be here initially that accidentally touched that reader will now be on this reader only and there can't be two instances of that card. Um, and then just for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna deal a third hand uh, to this seat in order to show what a normal functioning, uh, I, I guess like hand being read would look like. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the backend software element of how this all works now, um, how the cards are being read, how, how uh, graphic actions are actually entered, and then finally, what it looks like on the server side of things. So first and foremost, uh, what we're gonna see is uh, we're gonna look at the graphics software, and that's what you have here to the left. As you can see, we have Possible as the dealer here, myself and Christian are gonna be the other two positions. Now, as I mentioned, since Possible's hand uh, caught the card to the left, he, his hand is now going to be misread. So here on the server side, it's displayed as Jack three of hearts. When we go back to the table, what we'll be able to show you is that it's not Jack three of hearts. And in fact, I'm actually gonna possess either the Jack or the three of hearts in my hand. Now, as you can see, my hand is currently unread, and that's because one of my cards is being read by Possel's reader at the moment. Christian's hand will, in fact, be the Ace Five of Hearts, and uh, from here, we can just now go to tracking the action. Okay, so as you can see from the readers, the Ace of Hearts, Five of Hearts uh, is the first person's hand, King of Clubs, Jack of Hearts is the second hand, 
and the seven of hearts, three of hearts is the third person's hand, which actually wasn't reading and I had to enter manually. Okay, so I've actually entered in the, the proper information here so that you can see Apostle now reflects having a king of, king of clubs, jack of hearts, I have seven, three, etc. So now tracking the action is very simple in nature. You just go through whatever the action is. Let's say Chin chooses to complete from the small blind. Apostle now on the button has an option to do whatever he likes to do. Let's say he calls also, and I'm going to choose to check. We're going to now see a flop. So here we see a flop of three king deuce. That's going to be what's displayed on the table as well. Um, again, it's just my job as the person tracking the action to go through whatever happens. Let's say everybody checks around. As you can see now in the server, all of that is going to be reflective. Uh, I'm going to have checked the, the flop, Chin's checked the flop, Postle has now checked the flop, and it's actually waiting for a turn card. So, or sorry, it's waiting for Postle to take action. Let's say he also chooses to check. Now it's going to be waiting for a turn card. Once that turn card comes up, we're just going to continually go through all of this. And now nothing will actually be displayed to any of the graphics operators uh, any time that they're working solo. However, in the Stones setup, the way I understand it is the person entering the graphics is actually doing so on the same computer. So they have both of these screens available to them in real time. Therefore, they actually do have perfect information and thus creates another security breach through which um, one particular person has the access to all information at any given time. This is problematic, of course, and the reason why these are usually on separate, separate computers is to create more layers between the players themselves and the personnel who work behind the scenes. So this is just a very quick demonstration of how the RFID technology is being transmitted. All of this is taking place either through a wired connection or a wireless connection. Dependent upon which way you choose to do so, one method is going to be more secure than the other. Uh, to my understanding, the way the stone setup is currently in place, it's quite insecure. Almost everybody has access to go back to that control room. There is some video footage of Mike Postle himself back there talking to Taylor, the uh, producer of the show, about hands not reading or going over a strategy of hands where he got cooled off. Um, if you want to look more into that, I highly suggest everybody does so. The whole purpose I was trying to demonstrate here is just how the tech works and where the vulnerabilities potentially lie.